Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And I wonder if I'm getting some audio. Be just one moment. Hang on. Hang on one second. Can you uh, just want to go in and uh, check if you can hear my volume? I'm not hearing. Just want to um, be one moment. Test, 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 test. Can you hear my uh, uh, volume? Hello? Yeah, just want to make sure that you can hear me. Um, Okay, you do. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I'm not. I'm. I'm not hearing anything. To be quite honest, with you. let me see. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, great. I'm glad you are able to. Okay. Thank. Uh, thanks, FX. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, um, it's weird because usually my my uh, my mic's a lot louder. I don't know. No. But anyway, thanks for joining us here on the European crossover uh, webinar on NFP Day. And we're seeing the dollar continue to push. Actually, we're right into some resistance here. If you look here on the two-hour chart. Hang on one second. Coming in right here, we got this level right here, this 96, 92. Uh, that's actually was our uh, bias chart. Bias chart resistance coming in from the day before here. So we'll see what the market does right here. But uh, let's go on and close this out. Now we're just bumping just above and just a little over this uh, trend line. The broken trend line, we're coming right back and kind of pushing a little bit above it as we come into NFP day. And we're going to take a look at the data. We do have look um, coming up here in the states. Obviously, the the like they like to call the big granddaddy report, um, which is the non farm payroll report. Uh, non farm payrolls last month was seventy five thousand, and they're looking for a Reuters poll of one hundred sixty thousand on the headline print. And let's go and move in here to average hourly earnings supposed to come into point three. Uh, prior was 0.2. Obviously, if we come down here to 0.2, that's a, a, what would be a, a disappointment. Um, let's see here. And we have Canadian employment. Looking for a gain of 10,000 after a real stalwart gain of 27.7 thousand last month. And then a little bit later on, we do have IVPMI at 10 a.m. Eastern. Other than that, that's going to be it. So the big, the big, you know, uh, showdown is at 8:30 Eastern, and then we do have IVPMI at 10 a.m. Eastern, and then that's it for economic reports. That's going to be it there. Let's go on and um, move this out of the way. Correspondingly, we're seeing the euro come under pressure, and we'll take a look here with the euro. We're coming into that big level that we talked about. This 1262. So really, it, it needs to go in and hold this level on a daily close. And we look like we had a couple of stabs here for a potential inverted hammer, but we're kind of pushing the lows. And that's to be understandable because, you know, with NFP, they're looking for a rebound number. So we shall see. Let's go on and move this out of the way. And we're also seeing the cable move to new lows. Now, we're looking for, uh, I think, on our potential move on this, and we – uh, did also the Asian analysis, but we're looking for that same 25, 26. Nothing has changed here uh, with the cable. 
And we're seeing a little bit of a rebound here, not much uh, here with the dollar CAD. Dolly in has certainly peaked up a little bit here, finally made it up above uh, the eights here, trying to make a little bit of a rebound here. Now we're going in, uh, move into the news. And really was a look at that real super short morning bid. I don't know why I was even looking over it again, but that's all that came out of it. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Cyprus holds his final campaign rally today ahead of Sunday's election, but barring a surprise, his days in power look to be over. His transformation from the leftist firebrand to the reluctant background EU enforced austerity program brought him respect on the world stage and encouraged some investors to back to Greece, but won him few friends at home. The bottom line is that the combined effect of chronic unemployment, poverty, and cost cutting in the public sector has made life miserable for millions of Greece, and it's going to be punished for that. The irony, that is, of ultimately much of the Greek woes can be blamed on decades of mismanagement by political establishment before Cyprus. He will not likely be replaced by a scion of that same establishment. Kyakos uh, Mistakos, leader of the conservative New Democrats, is the Harvard-educated son of former prime minister. Uh, he is around 10 points ahead in the polls on his platform of tax cuts aimed at spurring economic growth and job creation. A trio of readouts overnight suggests growing concern in the UK over the uh, economic impact of Brexit. A survey conducted by the Institute of Directors showed Britain's businesses turning gloomier about the economy between May 22nd and June 5th, the first decline registered in 2019. A separate survey showed the number of people hired for permanent jobs via uh, recruitment firms in Britain fell for a fourth number. Fourth month showed the number of people hired for permanent jobs uh, for a fourth month in a row in June. And Britain's high street retailers had what was described as a washout in the same month as worried shoppers did not respond to early summer sales discounts. The news out of Germany is scarcely better. Industrial orders fell 2.2%, far more than the expected in May. And the economy ministry, economic ministry uh, uh, warned that the sector of lower, uh, Europe's largest economy was likely to remain weak in the coming months. Contracts for made in Germany goods were down 2.2% compared to the previous month. And moving on, euro set for the biggest weekly drop in three weeks as yields fall. The euro is lower on Friday on track for its biggest weekly drop in three weeks as the sliding core government bond yields ramped up pressure for fresh stimulus from the global central banks. Germany's 10-year bond breached the European Central Bank's deposit rate of point, negative 0.4. A level analyst said acts as a psychological barrier, even though short-dated German bond yields trade well below it. But despite the relentless drop in yields, the single currency has been relatively well supported around the 112 area, a level that's traded above since early June and about 1.5% above the 2019 low of 1055 hit in late May. Alice say that the euro's surprising strength is due to concerns that any stimulus from the European Bank, Central Bank after years of negative policy rates and multiple rounds of bond purchases may be dwarfed by the likely big cut rate cuts from the Fed. Although I'd be not, no, no means uh, rule out the possibility the ECB may once again conjure up an expansion surprise in the medium term, it may find it difficult to overcompensate for the Fed's significant scope for interest rate cuts. Commerce Bank Strategist said in a note, on Friday, the single currency edged lower, 1273 is on track for a weekly loss for 0.8 tenths percent. Expectations of a big U.S. rate cuts will not be shaken by jobs data due later. With economists pulled by Reuters predicting U.S. non-farm payrolls to increase to 160,000 in June from 75,000 in May. The dollar index against the basket may get your currencies to little change at 96.82. Having spent the previous day in a tight range as U.S. financial markets were closed for the Independence Day holiday. The Australian dollar was a shade weaker at 70.16 after climbing to a two-month high of 70.48 the previous day. The Aussie has advanced 1.4% this week with expected rate cuts from the Fed and ECB helping shift some of the focus away from the RBA's own easy bias. I mean, just for a moment.
Be just a moment. And Amanda was asking about that, so ask if they're new. There we go. Okay, let's go back. And now we can go on and take a look at the analysis or get ready for the, uh, get the bias chart ready. And let's start with the euro. We know this is a very big, big level. This 1262. Now, this is a big level that they really need to hold, but let's take a look what's beyond that on a two hour chart. Well, looks at we got a level here right here, twelve fourteen. Can it push below that? Is there something even beyond that? Twelve sixteen would be huge, uh, right here. Um, if we were to fall, we've been down here. This twelve twenty three has been key before. Um, obviously, twelve sixty two is huge on the daily. Let's. Hang on. We'll go with 1226 for a stretch, but boy, that's going to be some kind of a stretch. It says 1247 that's key here. Let's just go with 1247, 1247. So here's what we're going to do. Not that it can't push below it, but it's going to be. And the asterisk. That's very important for the daily. Very important. Let's get a little bit of room here. There we go. And on the upside, well, we had 1326, and I think that's going to remain the same because really anything up until that point, they're going to try and fade it. Uh, I think we, at this point we have to turn it. I don't want to go bearish yet until we lose 1262. And that probably sounds a little bit crazy, uh, but here's the deal. They need to break below 1262 to then say, okay, now we're bearish mode and now we're going. It doesn't mean because we've fallen. Which there's no doubt on a short-term basis you'd say bearish, but – once again, just as it was stating, one of the reasons the euro has held up, euro has held so well, held up so well, although it is lower, is the thought that they really do expect the Fed to hit a barrage of, not maybe not a barrage, but some you know, that the uh, ability to do additional cuts uh, far more exceeds than what the ECB, and that's why the euro has held up so well. So we could turn around, spin this thing, and maybe close right in here. And then the market's trying to figure out what it wants to do. So we'll keep that range until we get a daily close below 1262. From here, let's go and move on to the cable. Just for a moment. Well, no changes here. We're going to keep this 2526 that we've been, we've uh, marked off for the support. And boy, this thing has just been just a downside swoon like swoon like nobody's business. Uh, that's going to be on the on the downside. Let's look on the upside, if you can even call it an upside. It's, it's going to go back here to this, right there, 2618. 
So that still remains the same. With that, we'll go and move into the Aussie. Initial resistance will go at the 70.70. Now, we know we've talked about this. As long as we can get a daily close with the 70.27, I think we're going to scoot up to 71.23. But for today, Support's going to come in right there, They must have update. They must have update. Um, well, that's strange. They must have update trading view. Like it, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. Let's go move into the Kiwi. See, the reason I like that because this 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 pink stands out far better. This almost looks like that, like a light reddish or whatever. I, I like this stands out very. You can see how quickly that stands out very easily. Um, let's go and move into the Kiwi. Start out the week actually challenging this upper level, the 67.25, and it's held up relatively well. Uh, we pulled back and then we kind of mixed it around in here. Let's go and take a look here for the uh, intraday support. Now it's not the time to mess with this, but I don't like that at all. People always trying to tweak and retweak and retweak. Um, we're going to have the support here, and that's why I like this because it stands out. It's you know, but um, mm -hmm. 
we'll go with that, 6632. Let's see if this looks different, uh, if they changed, let's see. Yeah, they changed it, it's different. Um, let me see if this is still, no, they have it there. Oh, got it. I don't know what the heck they did with this thing. I want to save it like a default color. Um, well, well, not for time to do it now. Um, on the upside, uh, resistance. We're going to go right there. Sixty. We're going to keep it pretty tight. Sixty-seven twelve. Let's go and move into the uh, dollar CAD. And we did make it down here, this 3043. Um, you know, we had that rebound, and um, I'm glad I dumped out of that thing, although uh, it actually moved a little bit higher than what my entry was. But uh, this 3043. This is a good level here, too. We'll stick with this 3043. 30, you see right here, 3043. Actually, had it from higher as it had rebounded, but we've been looking at If you look on the analysis, we're looking for that 3043 for them to come down here. Upside, um, let's go and go to the two hour chart. Let's go with um, 31 even, 31 even on the upside. And let's move on to the dollar peso. We're still holding here in this uh, between this nineteen and nineteen twenty three. No, no changes. Um, key support is going to be this eighteen ninety two. Um, let's see if we have anything closer here on the two hour chart. Yeah, the eighteen ninety two. If we break them here, pretty huge level, too. Let's go right there at eighteen ninety six. And on the upside right there, 19, 
11, 4. And let's go move on to the dolly yen. We're just kind of mix mixing in the middle of the road here. Uh, after that rebound, we're just kind of held steady in here. Let's go and move into the two hour chart. Right there, eight twenty seven. 827 and on the downside 750. We had the 748, that'll be fine, and here 827. And then let's go move into the cash dollar index. We're still pumping up against here. Uh, as I told you, we've got, you know, this is a bias chart resistance we had on the daily. I mean, on the on the previous days at 96, 92. It's finally made up here. It's going to be pretty important if we can get past this 97.02. Let's see what we could push through. Plug the 15, which is, let's see, let's see the 11, 97.11. Let's take a look at that on the two-hour chart. Right there, oh eight, and there's eleven. Right there. So it's gonna be ninety seven eleven on the upside. On the downside, it's 96.44. So you'd have to really turn around. Well, there's some additional s support here at 96.54. Actually, we'll go on and um, let's see right here. Yeah, we'll move that up here. 96.54. to mess around with things here. Um, honestly, they just made a mess of this stuff here. Can't leave well enough alone. Um, just a moment. Okay, let's go on and uh, move into the cross rates now.
So after a pretty good strong move this week, the Kiwi Yen is trading relatively quiet here. Let's go and take a look at it on the two hour chart. Still right here with the 7176. Seventy one seventy seven, that'd be fine. And on the upside. Right there, 72.39. I'm going to keep pretty tight, 72.39. And let's go move on to the Euro Yen. Relatively quiet. Hang on. It's going to be right there at one twenty one forty five. It seems like a stretch, but it'd be right there at 2203, which is what we already had right here. Let's go move it to the Euro odd. We're going to say right here, right there, 6041. We can press a little bit low that, below that. Well, let's take a look on the two hour. I'm going to say right there. A lot of good volume right in there. 6032. <sighs> Let's see on the upside. Boy, this thing has just been beat down, I mean, like something else. That's the next resistance. I'm not saying they can make it there. We'll go with uh, right here. 61.44, still a pretty big hefty jump back up if it did. Then let's go and move into the Euro Kiwi. And 
And we're moving along because, like I said, we haven't had any movement, no movement. So um, we're clipping along here for the last couple of days, not very much movement. So not a lot of changes. We'll go, and that might even seem like a stretch because you know we almost had 6909 and there's 12. It's trading relatively quiet. Um, let's go right there with. Um, Just a tad lower here. 6920. And we'll go right there with 6829 for support. And on to the Aussie end. Just right here at seventy six oh one. Seventy five forty seven for the long for support. And let's go move into the guppy. Seems really in poor shape. On a short haul basis, it's going to be right there, thirty-five forty. Not even saying much. Um, let's go thirty-five twenty-seven. If we can move higher here, it's going to be right there, 3613. Call it 14, that's fine. And lastly, the uh, sterling odd. The other day, we went all the way up to the top of the hour, but like I said, we're so quiet. It hasn't been a whole lot of movement.
It's a good area here. I like this area. Let's see if we can hold this 78. Um, 78, 71. And the 69, that'll be fine. And on the upside, um, ADO3, and that'll be fine, ADO3. Right there. Well, there's the bias chart for today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to keep this for range until unless we until we break 1262 on a daily close. Then that'll reinforce the bearishness. So it'll be interesting to see how today closes. As I mentioned, one of the reasons that they say the year is holding up so well is because the <clears throat> the ability if if the Fed were to go that route with the Fed cuts, well they're expected to cut, but that they have a lot more room to move with cuts than the ECB. So why the ECB the euro's holding up despite you know these new all time lows in, in boons. So we shall go in and see. We could maybe get a dip and then the uh then the euro come back, i.e. the dollar rally come back into the range. We shall see. But uh, good luck with the, the granddaddy report of them all, the NFP, and good luck trading. We'll see you in the chat room.